All right, you see, are you ready? I was born ready, dude. <laughs> Here we go. So, um, so for those of you listening to the audio, we are also now showing video, and this will be posted on Rowell's awesome website, cleartosend.net, correct? <laughs> yes, yes, we will post the video on there. Very good. So what we see here is the Echo Site Survey user interface, and you know I'm running it natively on Mac. You can you know run it on Windows or, or whatnot, and it's a tool for designing Wi-Fi networks, verifying them, troubleshooting them, and whatnot. Right now we're gonna just do a simple Wi-Fi network design to a single floor, and uh, you you know keep it keep things super small, super simple, and see how it goes. So. Always the design first starts, uh, and I'm going to use some best practices here that that I also talked about during the atmosphere event. Event, how's that? Yeah, that that works out perfect. Okay, so it all starts out with a map, and what we want is high quality map. Uh, you know, white background, uh, crisp te texts, uh, room numbers, usually visible uh, stuff like that. And if you can. Uh, always use CAD drawings. So whoever you talk to regarding the uh, floor plans, ask for CAD drawings. And here's the reason why. And, and by the way, for those of you that have seen the CAD drawing demo already several times, we're not just going to go CAD drawing. We're going to go much deeper than that into 9.0 features. The CAD import has been there already for a while, but we'll, we'll go deeper once we have imported the CAD file. The good thing about CAD files is, first of all, it has several views to the same file, like we have a, here a more... Oh more cluttered view and then we have a cleaner floor plan kind of layout so we're going to select the cleaner layout and after that uh, you know the computer will recalculate and well that found, sounds 80s the computer will recalculate <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then on the left hand side from the CAD drawing we have parsed all the layers so instead of drawing the walls like we did when we designed Wi-Fi in the 80s we're just gonna, you know, <laughs> se select the wall materials directly from here. You can see those wall materials highlighted in blue color, like windows here, uh, exterior walls now highlighted in in blue. Yeah, uh, and it tells you the dB loss of each of the different wall materials or wall types. Exactly. We're just associating dB loss wall materials into the CAD drawing wall materials. And why are we doing this? to not have to draw walls. And for example, for doors, the tool is intelligent enough to recognize, okay, it's a door and I'm going to close it and not show it like this as we are seeing it now in the design. So what we're gonna do next is um, just hit import. And by the way, the scale automatically comes in from the drawing as well. And now it's gonna be a bit slow cause we are recording QuickTime uh, yeah. screen fast so at grab the same some coffee. time. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So grab some coffee while you're at it. And who, don't who creates mind. the messages on the on the loading? Oh, we we all do. It's yeah. it's a joint effort, and I think eight seven or nine zero will have a boatload of new messages. Awesome. So it's surprising how QuickTime uh, sc screen recording actually makes this a lot slower. Yes. Uh, isn't, yeah. isn't it? But but that's fine. Uh, you get the idea. It's what still. we have available yeah, right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This is this is what we have. Maybe we will speed this up uh, artificially, and then yeah. my voice will also sound like this. With, with, with my awesome video editing skills. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> after after 18 gazillion episodes, you must be getting pretty good at that, right? Uh, audio maybe, but <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take man. a shot with video. So now that we imported the CAD file, we can see, yeah, the walls were actually quite nicely automatically drawn. But now let's get into the fun part, the, um, the new features of the tool. Of course, um, just as usual, we select uh, if we want to start designing the Wi-Fi network, what we do is place the APs and start figuring out the channels. I'm just going to do, because you do Cisco, right? Yeah, yeah. At your workplace. So I'm going to do Cisco 3800s, 2.4 right. plus 5 gigahertz. Latest These could latest. also be assigned for dual 5 in yeah, our tool and, five, and, and in real life. Have you tried the 3800s already? I have, yes. How, how do they work for you? So far, it's working out It's working out pretty well in my environment. That's That's good to hear, man. Okay, so um, for example, here you can see that yeah, the walls uh, actually do have a major impact if we if we yeah, show we them can again. See the attenuation. You place it in the hallway so we can see the signal just shooting down the hallway. Exactly, and and it's blocked by the elevator shaft here in the middle. So um, it got what, shafted. <laughs> it got shafted exactly. So what I'm gonna do is um, gonna hide the walls for now because that's how I like it when I'm yeah. doing my design and, and I'm gonna do a horrible hallway hallway design, hallway design of Wi-Fi so this is bad don't or do hotel this hotel design but, yeah, exactly or typical hotel design and um, so, so just place APs in the hallways and 
all the APs on the single channel as well. So, so it's looking pretty bad. And now what I want to understand is how is this, um, and I'm just going to show full screen, how is this going to work with if I start adding some capacity in the network? First, let's, let's see how it looks like coverage-wise. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty good. So, mm -hmm. And here's, how, here's the number one trap where people fall when they're doing Wi-Fi design. It's, it's the... Um, they just go, oh, okay, it's Wi-Fi, so if I have coverage, I have everything, right? Right, everything's and perfect. Everything's perfect. But is it Rovo now? Is it? For the people who are in the hallway, yeah. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And if, if you have five users in the network, this is fine. And it has the beautiful marketing colors that I adjusted yeah, on the legend the as well. Colors, yeah, uh, you know, it, That's it, what everyone wants to see. Green. Exactly, exactly. The heat map. The, the heat map. The heat map that everyone looks at and and show some people will show you green is good yeah exactly so uh what cool. i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put some capacity into the network as well so so okay. we saw that coverage is great but i'm oh i'm a horrible drawer <laughs> uh it's okay it's just demo purpose so you're doing a are you doing a coverage uh this is the same or it's what in previous versions was just the coverage area mm -hmm. now it's just an area because it has coverage and capacity. Oh, okay, so it's an area. So, so, you know, this this area not only does it have your coverage, but it has. You can do capacity. You can so do you capacity. So, how many devices box. in the whole building, for example? Let's say three hundred, okay. and then I'm gonna say, theoretically, what if we had a uh, conference room That's in right. here okay. or or an so you're drawing another area inside of the area precisely precisely that's that's the idea so and how many devices in that area uh let's say a couple of hundred 150 yeah. and by default the tool is going to divide those uh like 50 percent laptops 50 percent smartphones because that's what people often have okay. with them it's it's laptops and smartphones but of course you can go and configure these any way you I want see. so okay. you see we you can put change that 150 value. And, yeah, yeah. and there's all these different kinds of devices and different kind of you know, use cases for for uh, all the devices. So pretty simple. At the simplest, you just put in the number of devices, and that's mm -hmm. it. You don't need to touch the uh, the more complicated stuff if you don't want. Okay. And so then to summarize, though, you did you created a. It's not a coverage area anymore. It's an area. Yeah. You you and you outline the whole floor with an area. Yeah. And then within that, in that big area, you set a capacity for that large area. Yeah. And then you went in, you said, okay, here's a conference room. Then you created a new area within the larger area. Correct. Yeah. And added a new capacity value to that because yep. that is your, say, like your auditorium, your conference room. Yep. So let's say in the bigger area we had, or in the whole building, we had 300, but then we throw in additional 150 mm -hmm. that are only in the conference room. Yeah. And the other guys are then outside of the conference room, but inside the building. That's kind of the, kind of the thinking here. Okay. And now... Um, you that know, it was good for coverage, but what, what, how is this single channel, uh, hallway design for capacity of the network? Yeah. I see that in the drop down, there's a new option for a, a different, what do you guys call that? Like a different map called airtime utilization. Exactly. Exactly. And again, quick time running. So it's yeah. not a, okay. So we've got the covered the area now working within the area i guess we just had we were selecting the wrong area and it just wasn't propagating for some reason but we got it propagating now properly and we're looking at airtime utilization give us a rundown on what airtime airtime utilization is on this heat map yeah in general uh wi wi-fi works obviously on the airwave airwaves right and and um on a given channel it's by standard, Wi-Fi is half duplex, so it's either the access point or one of the access points or one of the clients that's talking on a given channel. Only one device is talking in Wi-Fi at any given channel. And, uh, you know, the more client devices and the more access points are on a given channel and the more data they are transmitting, the more utilized the airtime will be. Is that fair? Yes. And... Um, Higher Wi-Fi standards like 802.11ac can transmit more data in the air 
uh, in a shorter time. So the airtime with the same amount of data, the airtime will be less utilized. And if the Wi-Fi network is configured badly, such in this, like in this case, the airtime uh, will be, you, you know, inefficiently utilized. So the mm -hmm. airtime utilization visualization shows in percentage, uh, given the number of client devices that you that we just configured and given your network setup of the APs, how much traffic is being generated and how busy is your airtime? So how effective is your network? So if the airtime utilization is over 100%, is 100% or more, certainly there's not enough capacity to, okay. to transmit all the packets that your clients want to transmit. You know, thus bad hotel Wi-Fi, bad stadium Wi-Fi, all that. Yeah, so on the, right now what we're looking at is it's red and it says it's over 100 and that means it's just 100% utilization. And there you go. You, it, you've hovered over an area. Exactly. Four hundred and ninety-nine percent. That's uh. The, this is not yet finished, but at the top you see uh. You know, two point four gigahertz airtime on channel one, which is where the clients in this location would be associated with, which is four hundred ninety-nine percent. And at the bottom you see how utilized five gigahertz is on channel thirty-six, which is one hundred thirty-six percent. So clearly, first of all, there's an it, the, the frequencies are not balanced. Mm -hmm. Uh. We can see that there's more in the 2.4 than there would be on the five. Exactly. And basically, we have to re redesign this. Right now, it's all the APs are in the hallway. They're all on the same channel. So if you got channel overlap, exactly. Uh, basically, all of the devices sharing the same capacity. Yep, that's and this is a very common mistake people do. And and here, if you look at the text very closely. Um, it says this AP and other APs. You can see those two lines there below the cursor. This AP and other APs. So you can see this AP is utilizing 46% of the airtime. So if it was just this AP on 2.4, it would be fine. But other APs, because they all are on the same channel, are using 453% <laughs> of the airtime or trying to uh, anyway, which it's impossible, but they're trying. Yeah. So uh, we can see that there's certainly a channeling problem. If all the APs were on different channels, we would have much less problems. So what do we do? We either manually assign the channels or run the auto planner and uh, kind of simulate uh, or run the auto planner to assign the channels automatically. And this is also new to version 9, is, is full liberty of choosing whichever channels you want to use uh, for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz uh, channel plans. Because previously we only had, you know, you could check UNI1, UNI2, mm -hmm. but now if you have individual channels that you don't want to use or cannot use, you can, you can deselect them. You can okay. deselect them. And so just takes gonna... the capacity planner into consideration? Uh, yeah, yeah, it optimizes the channels uh, based on based on the whole whole setup. But of course, yeah, it looks different. Yeah, it's different. So it already helped quite significantly. We still have a problem. But last time, you know, four hundred ninety nine percent on two four and one thirty six on five. Now we have what one hundred thirty percent on two point four and only ten percent on five. Yeah. There you go. And still on 2.4, we have channel interference, right? Yeah. This AP 39%. Every single 2.4 radio is turned on. So we're, we're still exactly. channel overlap. This AP 39% and the other APs are causing 91% of the load. So, so still not ideal. And there's a huge like balance gap between 2.4 and 5. 2.4, 130%. 5, 5 gigahertz, 10%. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. So what do we do if, let's say we don't have band steering, what do we do to steer more clients? You can start turning off 2.4 radios. And if we don't want to be that dramatic yet. You could uh, turn down the transmit power of the 2.4 radios. Exactly. So let's, let's do that. Let's turn down the transmit power on the 2.4 radios. I'm just going to show the AP list to enable the quick select. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit quick select and I'm going to only select the 2.4 radios. Mm -hmm. So you can see now the orange toggles in the AP list uh, say, yeah, you've selected these guys. And I'm going to go actions edit selected simulated radio. So it only edits, edits the ones that I've selected. And I'm going to drop the 2.4 gigahertz transmit power from two, 25, yeah, 25 to, two, to two, milliwatts. 2 milliwatts. And 5 gigahertz radios will still be on 25. So I'm going to just do that. I'm going to... It's going to visualize it for you, do the predictive model. Exactly. It's going to recalculate the whole thing. Because we're running the QuickTime recording on the same laptop. It's a little bit slower. Exactly. So. Now it looks already much prettier, much closer to green anyway than what it used it's like to be. like the southern states of the United States. 
<laughs> Precisely. Oh, there you got the airtime utilization down to 60% now on the 2.4. Exactly. And 17 on 5. Yeah. So, you, so there's still a bit of work to do on 5. And um, let's drill down just for the fun of it. What is causing that uh, 60% utilization on 2.4? Okay. Yeah, how do you drill into that? How, uh, let's only choose, now we were looking at 2.4 and 5 combined, so I'm just going to uh, look at 2.4 in more detail. Uh -huh. And it gives me more details in the tooltip. For example, look at the bottom okay. of the tooltip. Management frames are eating up 30% wow. of your airtime, data 26 and control 3. That's interesting. So, uh, what, what this means in short, that more than half of the airtime you're using is overhead. Right, it's it's not your data is what you want to transmit, and now thirty percent is management frames. Mm -hmm. So, in a typical configuration, how would you minimize the number of management frames? You could turn off a number of SSIDs. You could turn off rate two point four radios. Uh, what would what options do we have in Ekahel as far as the predictive goes? That's a very good question, Rowell. Uh, in fact, this is all new as well, this dialogue. So we give you the options to uh, disable. How load. did you get to that dialogue, by the way? Uh, I went to project network configuration. Okay. So it's a new yeah. dialogue yeah. altogether. All, okay. all so we increased the minimum data rates. We, we had one and six, so we're going to do 12 and 12. That Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, That's basically, yeah, the minimum, the required data rate to join. The, exactly, yeah. exactly. So, because we increase the minimum data rate, uh, that's that's required. We, uh, you know, all the clients have to talk faster, right? So we save up plenty of airtime. Yeah. And with the lower data rate, that data rate is not going to be able to be demodulated as uh, at a farther distance. It's yeah. uh, the client can demodulate that low data rate because it's using a less complex modulation scheme. So the other APs would be it, it would be as a like an interference. Yep. Yep. Exactly. It's a poor way for me to describe it, but <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think you nailed it. And then you also have the number of SSIDs that you could configure per radio on two point four and five. You can even enable or disable request to send or clear to send. That's exactly. that's pretty awesome. We should enable clear to send <laughs> so, uh, for the sake of this podcast, but I'll just leave it disabled. So, um, okay, let's see what difference does it make. And remember. We had thirty percent management frames uh, mm -hmm. on, on the two point four on two point four for that AP, and let's see if we get uh, prettier colors. Yeah. So by the fall, it was set to the low, lowest data rate and six SSIDs. Yes, correct. Okay. One uh, one megabit data rate on two four, six megabit on five, which are the lowest possible, yeah. and uh, six SSIDs per okay. radio. So, so now it's looking more green, it, which people green. want to see. So, so fantastic. <laughs> and what happened? So management used to be thirty percent. We dropped it down to one percent. I kid you not, one wow. percent. So that's how big of a difference it makes. Yeah. It's it's seriously. So you can show, you know, with this predictive modeling, you can show a client, okay, you don't want to enable all seven of these SSIDs in exactly. your environment. This is what how much overhead you'll have with this number of. SSID is enabled, if you can prune that down to three or less, this is a, the biggest improvement you'll see with this configuration. Exactly, exactly. You can you can use it to kind of educate your customers too. But of course, uh, by far the best best use case I can think of for this is you can actually make sound Wi-Fi design and see what, what yeah. has an impact and how much. I was surprised by how much. You know, management frames are dropped by and this, but but it took you know, Andrew Andrew's calculator agrees with this. So, so Andrew's calculator is kind of uh, implemented in this capacity planner. Not really, no. Okay. This is all a proprietary Ekahau, but there's only one way to correctly calculate, uh, you know, Wi-Fi capacity. And granted, Andrew was one of the innovators, and he also flew into Hels Helsinki to help our algorithm guys okay. and our UX guys to kind of you know make this. Better. So, so we talked with Andrew in Helsinki for a week about different aspects okay. and, and, and all that stuff. And then he went behind closed doors to talk with our algorithm guys because mm -hmm. I didn't understand anything that they were saying. <laughs> but yeah, finally, you know, we have something like this. This is awesome. I like it. Yeah, thanks. I, I really appreciate that. And, you know, you can then start tweaking from there, like move the APs to uh, 
from hallways to rooms and and do all that fun stuff then maybe we would rerun the channel planner and and uh, go from there but all i'm saying is uh, it's it is quite accurate now and 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 works quite nicely so yeah, it's a big improvement from the previous version. We can get a little bit more granular detail into designing networks and seeing what kind of impact we are creating when we're deploying APs and how it should look like. And then also educate people that aren't uh, like attuned to Wi-Fi, that don't have that terminology and say, okay, this management number is too high. We want to lower it. And these are the methods in which you can lower it if you're able to do it this way. Exactly. And there are other options like ban- you saw maybe in the in the menu we have yeah. we have band steering as well so you can slide how many percent on 2.4 and how many on five are we targeting and, and all that fun stuff great uh, and and then there's the all improved auto planner which has a simpler dialogue uh just gonna put in those what, what were we using 3800 3800 3802i Exactly, 2.4 and 5. So there's the new auto planner okay. uh, as well that takes into account the high density areas and designs the network okay. accordingly. Plus, there's more intelligent intelligence in the algorithm. First goal was to avoid AP overpopulation. Okay. So it doesn't put in too many APs. Uh, it automatically disables two for radios or assigns them to uh, to dual five if, if so desired. Oh, okay. Uh, it, it tries to avoid elevator shafts, staircases, even without you assigning okay. them. So it, you, you know, has a lot of intelligence, like two years, a couple of guys, uh, algorithm guys, uh, are, are basically, their ba- brains have been put into this algorithm. Mm-hmm. And he, here's an example of, of a design that the auto planner actually does. So instead of you manually doing it, the auto yeah, planner did. To me, if it you look like at this, it it's actually not that bad, yeah. right? Uh, this is how I would do it. I would put the APs in the rooms. Yep. I would disable some of the 2.4 yep, gigahertz radios, some of the radios. A, as seen here. Plus, there's much more concentration of APs where, your it, capacity, area where our capacity area is. Precisely. Nice. Plus, plus the heat map, green heat map shows, yeah, actually, guys, you did a pretty good job with the design. And now I have 2, 4, and 5 enabled as well. So, you know, not... Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, it's a big improvement versus I know the last time I used it, it just placed a lot of APs in a row. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So it's it's a humongous improvement, uh, two years of, of design. And, you know, the, the airtime visualization is just a byproduct of this auto planner uh, that that the algorithm guys create. Yeah, so. and I'd still recommend people to try it out. I wouldn't say fully rely on the auto no, planner. No, yeah. no, no. Um, you have to really look at the environment, check out the, the you know, your overhead, make sure you're building it for capacity, and you can install the APs and where the planner did put them. And you can move them around. It's not a set in stone kind of thing. You could you could change the design as you see fit. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I wouldn't, you, you, you know, take this for granted. But I think, first of all, there's so many people who don't really understand Wi-Fi design that should, you know, take cwnp classes and cisco classes but never will so this already helps them to create you know better designs that they would otherwise and for you wi-fi experts like you you know you and keith and sam and blake and lee uh this gives a good starting point for the design where you can then start fine-tuning and actually architecting the network so it takes much of the like the bulk work out of the equation if you will awesome i like it i look forward to using it thanks for um giving me the opportunity to show it man i I really do appreciate that yeah i appreciate you meeting with me here in uh, santa clara uh, my backyard Um, all right thank you thanks guys